All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is how to calculate the drive resolution on an Allen Bradley servo motor. And this is a NPL motor, and we'll be using that with a Kinetic 6000. Again, this is what my training setup is, ha currently has, and this is basically to give you kind of an idea and open your eyes on how the calculate feature works. Now, um, now you will have questions probably about you know if you're using gearboxes or if you're using uh, sprockets and how to calculate like belt length and stuff like that I completely understand that everything is dependent just make sure you're aware that we're going to talk about the basic uh, the basis of, of where everything kind of grows from and the foundation from this uh, so keep in mind uh, the degrees right here where it says degrees and units per scaling and units uh, per our position units unwind and position unit scaling it says degrees right here right just keep that in mind now that is because we typed in degrees right here now I can go offline and I want you to note too that if you go to properties and you go to your motor uh, uh, driving motor right here and you go to calculate no matter what you put in here say if I wanted it to go 360 360 degrees and one drive revolution like meaning one revolution of this motor right here if I wanted to go one revolution and go 360 degrees even if I hit calculate right here I cannot update it because I'm online so to use this feature you have to be offline so even if you wanted to just practice or something for that nature or set something up uh, kind of like I did you know just set it up on the side um, then you can go offline so I'm gonna go offline real quick and we're going to currently go offline we're going to open this up and we're going to go to properties again now i'm going to show you this just so you know um, keep in mind it did say degrees right here right so if we want to change that we can go we want to change it to millimeters we can go to millimeters hit apply and then it's going to say and in the uh, thing right here is going to say and the calculate position parameters it's going to say millimeters right now um, in our, my case, we want to keep it as degrees because to prove my point out better, degrees just works out, right? So we'll put in degrees. All right, so we're going to come back here. We're going to go to calculate. Now let's say we wanted to do 360 degrees, 360 degrees in one drive re revolution, right? So that's one revolution of this motor going from this point all the way around back to this point. Now we want to keep in mind too that our position unit unwind, this is in degrees, right? So this is in degrees per uh, unwind cycle, right? So how many cycles of unwind? If we want to have it 360 degrees and then have it roll over at 360 degrees, we're going to have to type in 360. And then we can hit calculate and then to use this, we can uh, actually apply this now because we are offline. So there's no risk of harm. That's the reason they do that uh, for safety protocol. They basically make you do it offline. We can hit update, hit close. Now that has updated our conversion constants. Now, as you see, I'm in uh, rotary. Now, if I was in linear, I would not have some of the features that I, you know, obviously it wouldn't pertain to any of that. So if you're in rotary or, or linear axes, uh, that's gonna it's gonna make this screen look a little bit different. So just keep that in mind I'm gonna keep that back at rotary because it just makes my example that much more easier All right, so we're gonna hit apply All right, and we did put in just keep in mind. We put in the parameters of 360 degrees per one motor revolution and then our Unwind is going to be when our count uh, Gets reset for the actual position uh, and then we calculated that and hit update and then hit close. Now at this point we have to download so we're going to go to who active and we're going to go download this and I'm going to show you this and then I'm going to come back and we're going to actually talk about it a little bit deeper uh, because again you need to understand the base foundation of actual you know setting the resolution first before you can move forward on like doing something more complex about like adding gearboxes or stuff like that. All right, so uh, we're gonna wait till our circus ring closes. You can see that right there, we have our circus ring happy. Um, we're gonna come in here real quick and home our servo. 
So we're going to hone the servo and make sure we're actually looking at the um, the driver here. We're going to come into our servo drive and we're going to go to monitor axis tag and then you're going to come down to where it has actual position which is right here and what we're going to do at this point is we're going to come to our MAM. Now keep in mind I'm um, the order of standard order of operation if you're using uh, motion access direct commands is going to be issue and off issue and on and then go ahead and issue an MAM so with the parameters that we put in we should be doing 360 degrees per one cycle now I'm gonna actually turn this motor so you can see it uh, so I'm gonna turn it off I'm going to manually turn this degrees so that you can see it. So well, I go from here to here, and you see I have uh, I have this uh, little uh, reflector on here. You can see if I from the reflector, you can tell that if I go all the way around, it's 360 degrees. Okay, so you see that. Now, with that said, it's it's really really small as far as the movement. So let's actually go and do that through our MAM. So we're gonna now, we're gonna turn this on, turn the servo back on so we can't touch it. Our bus light is on. All right, so now we get to our MAM and we do 360 degrees. Type that in, 360 degrees. And let's see, right here, 360. And then we're going to type in our speed. Well, I'm going to put a speed of 25. That's pretty slow for what we're going to be doing, but I want you to see this motor actually run. Okay, so now I'm going to issue that, and then you can see the motor actually running. Now, notice the the uh, degrees that it's running right now. It's currently about halfway done, and this, again, is going to be where the marker was. Now it ran 360 degrees, so that's 360 degrees off of one motor revolution, meaning one revolution of the shaft and the center of the actual motor. And the, the stator going in a circle, one motor revolution from keyway to keyway, are, it's going to be 360 degrees. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now uh, let's turn it off real quick. And so we understand that now we have it set to that. Now let's actually go in here and think about if we wanted to come in here and say okay we have a 10 to 1 gearbox. So I'm going to give you that example just to kind of get now that we have a base understanding about how to do the calculation. Uh, we're going to put in our calculation values again 360 degrees. Our rollover is 360 degrees and then we're going to say let's just say per how many revolutions. So if we have a, a 10 to 1 gearbox, then we're, we need to say there's 10 revolutions before there's one output revolution of the gearbox. So if we were basing movement off 360 degrees from the point, the output point of the, the shaft of the gearbox, and the gearbox is a 10 to 1 ratio, then we need to put a 10 here. If, it, if it's a 5 to 1 uh, gearbox, then it's five, you put a 5. If it's a three to one, you, you can put a three. Uh, in our example, we're just gonna do 10 because it's simple. All right, then we're gonna come in and calculate that again. So we're gonna update this. Now the numbers kind of look similar because we used a 10. If I actually come in here and put a five, you'll see that does change. So you see right here that it does actually coincide with doing the proper function. So actually for example, let's do three times. Um, and then we'll hit update. So now we're going to do 360 degrees and we're going the output shaft of the actual gearbox is attached to it. So if we put a 3 to 1 gearbox on the back on the back attached to this motor, the output shaft of the the actual gearbox should be now uh, one revolution would be equal to 360 degrees. Okay? So let's close that, hit apply. All right? and then we're going to apply and then we're going to come back in here and download that again because again you cannot change any of this uh, while you're online because again safety protocol so when it comes down to it let's actually download this and I'll show you this last example and then we'll move forward uh, let's go ahead and wait to our circus ring is going through its cycle one two three four 
as you see right here and then once it starts now notice our tags uh, current actual position it's not reading right now because it's currently going through and making sure everything is is fine right so it's a circus ring is one two three four as soon as it hits four the data will actually populate just like it just did alright so with that said we should have if we turn this right if we turn this we should have three times one two three that should be 360 so now if we just to understand that we did a three to one gearbox so that means if we put a gearbox on here with a ratio of three to one on the back side this motor would have to turn three times before it turns the revolution of the, the gearbox one time but the the degrees that we run are still going to be 360 degrees so if we were trying to accomplish that and say I want to run 360 degrees on a 3 to 1 gearbox and have the, the motor we want to run one revolution and we'll come over here to motion axis directs we'll turn it off because that's our standard order, order of operation turn it on then we'll do the MAM we'll do 360 degrees again right here do 360 degrees actually let's home it first so that we know that it's zero so it is zero let's go 360 degrees and we'll do a speed of 25 actually let's do it a little bit faster let's do 30 all right and then what we'll do is we'll execute this now what's going to happen is this is going to turn three times to obtain 360 degrees okay so keep in mind that this would be one time okay so this would be two times and this will be the third time coming up and then it should stop now that's 360 degrees so that would be that in our instance with the example we gave be one uh, gearbox revolution of a 3 to 1 gearbox we had to turn the motor three times to obtain one revolution of the gearbox now again I'm, it's an imaginary gearbox because I don't actually have one but I'm trying to give you the base principles about how to understand your calculations and stuff of that nature when it comes to servo constants um, there's a huge I mean we could talk about this realistically for probably a day or two to really understand the principles behind this but breaking down the philosophy behind it is very simple this is a 3 to 1 gearbox ratio right now um, that's if I get around one time this is the first time so the the gearbox wouldn't have been have went around once this is the second time the, for the motor the third time for the motor so now the gearbox that would have went full circle from keyway to keyway um, one revolution so hopefully that does clear up a lot of uh, information or it does actually kind of open your eyes to a lot of information about you know using servos and basically servo parameters uh, in your drive and motor the calculate feature and how to do the constants right so if you're doing a rotary it's really easy to use this calculate feature if you're using something really simple just like I illustrated or if it's really complex just keep adding everything together right use the math behind it you know if it's a 3 to 1 gearbox attached to a 16 tooth uh, sprocket that's attached to another sprocket that's only 10 teeth then that means you're you're changing your ratios all the time and you have to equate for that so just no matter how complex the, the drivetrain gets just make sure you know that the base foundation, base, uh, base principles, is still going to be uh, position units per revolution, right? And then you, you do the rest of it from there. So hopefully that did clear up a lot of information and it did, it, it did open your eyes to basically how the system works and how this, this servo drive works right now uh, and how to do uh, rev resolution. So with that said, uh, Hopefully you learned a lot from that video and we'll see you guys on the next one.